we are launching into space as many things as we can, as quickly as we can to perform whatever services uh, need to be there. Every single satellite that gets launched has a limited amount of fuel in it. And there are no gas stations in space. And the issue is that once the satellites are done with their mission, which is again, typically limited by the amount of propellant you bring in, we just leave those satellites in there. That's the end of life. And now it becomes critically important to get it out of the way so it doesn't become debris that other people run into. We already polluted Earth. Let's not pollute the space. And that's what we do. A refuelable satellite is incredibly important. This is the ultimate green technology at the end of the day. And that's something we're passionate about too, is being good stewards. Vilio is a really, really cool orbit. Um, it's basically the edge of space. So think about where the atmosphere of Earth ends and space begins. You still have in Vilio orbit, which is about 200 to 300 kilometers from the ground, you still have a little bit of atmosphere. There are no satellites right now flying in Vilio, save for maybe one or two scientific missions. When you fly low, you start just barely skimming the atmosphere of the Earth. And this has drag, essentially. And a satellite with no propellant or propulsion system will quickly deorbit and burn up. In fact, that's how they get rid of satellite junk, is they say, go fly low and then experience that drag and go burn up in the atmosphere. It starts in the 60s. Uh, someone realized, man, if you flew a satellite low enough, you could skim the atmosphere, and maybe you could collect it and use it for propellant, and you're kind of in business. So people thought, well, we just discovered nuclear energy. So why don't we build a nuclear reactor, put it in satellite, put it in space, and then use that to power the electric thruster, and there you go. You, you have infinite fuel supply. Well, no one really liked the idea of having a nuclear reactor flying over their heads. But in the last 20 years, this notion of air-breathing electric propulsion started to capture attention again, because people realized, you know what? maybe this is starting to be feasible. And it's really a simple equation at the end of the day. Can you make your thruster produce more thrust than drag? And let's start rethinking this and reimagining it. We put together our model of the system, which was the holistic model of the system that said, okay, the solar panels, collection, the thruster, putting that all together and figuring out which parts needed to be optimized and where. Eventually it will become a full patent. This is our unique technology that no one really has. And we believe, and that's what we're testing in the lab, uh, hopefully we'll prove it shortly, that this will allow us to break even and much more that will allow really cool applications of this technology in space and will transform how the satellites fly in space, allowing a true refuelable satellite for the first time ever. That can collect the atmosphere you're flying through, use that and feed it to your electric thruster. All of a sudden, if you're flying low in very low Earth orbit, you can collect that atmosphere indefinitely. Everything comes together from the system and performance of the thruster. Not only is your thruster uh, performs efficiently, but your scoop performs efficiently. To the system and power dynamics and power management of the entire satellite in constructing a low drag satellite body, the entire dynamics here are very strongly coupled together. And there are all of these amazing reasons to use air-breathing electric propulsion to fly as low as you possibly can. And this is what our technology enables. Because our technology refuels from the atmosphere, it is already flying two to five times lower than anyone else. If you're closer to something, you can take a clearer picture. Better resolution imagery is what everyone wants. Well, that applies to so many different things, from active sensors to communication. And all of a sudden, by flying lower, you're able to do so much more with the same satellite that you had before. You can have direct phone call with someone anywhere in the world because you have a constellation, so you don't need to go through cell towers. You have cell tower flying over you. Refueling means it's not just about flying as low as possible for as long as possible. It means that you have access to the ability to refuel. It can refuel right there in very low Earth orbit and go up back into that low Earth orbit environment or higher. It can do servicing missions. It can go grab a piece of space debris, bring it back down, deorbit that debris to help clean up space. Refuel again and do it over and over again.
someone should be doing this. It's right on the cusp. Someone should be doing this. And Slava and I, we you know, developed this very close relationship at Aerospace and we were talking to each other going, shouldn't that be us? Like, aren't we the ones who should be doing this? And so what we're gonna do is bust through that lower limit at the end of the day and allow you to fly lower than ever before. We believe that ASSET is a transformative technology that will change how we fly satellites in very low Earth orbit and low Earth orbit. It will transform the space economy. You're gonna be able to refuel and maneuver around the planet without regret more than anyone's ever been able to do. And that's what our asset technology is going to enable.